In the previous video we looked at uh, leptons, we're now going to look at quarks which are the other type of fermion we need to be aware of. Uh, before we do though we're going to just look at um, the fact that um, the way that quarks were discovered. Um, so they were discovered in a similar manner to alpha scattering. Uh, so um, with uh, Rutherford's experiment where he um, bombarded um, a uh, gold foil with alpha particles uh, a similar sort of thing was done that allowed us to discover um, uh, quarks but it was done in a slightly different way uh, where it was actually electrons that were um, uh, scattered from nucleons so protons and um, neutrons and they were scattered through large angles so in a similar way again to um, what we saw with alpha scattering with the, the gold foil, um, they were scattered by uh, through large angles by nucleons, and that suggested uh, that um, the nucleons didn't actually have an evenly distributed charge. Um, so it suggested that nucleons had um, uh, were not uniform. And by uniform we mean that they weren't the same throughout, um, but have discrete um, charges in them. And those discrete charges uh, were found to be uh, corresponding to the quarks that they contained. Uh, secondly, um, something else that's really important about quarks, they're never actually found in isolation. Um, so what we mean by that is while you can have an electron floating around or you can have a, uh, a tau particle floating around somewhere, um, you will never find a quark by itself, uh, just one quark separately. Um, they are only found in hadrons. And we'll have a look uh, in another video of what hadrons are, but just to uh, give you an idea, both protons and neutrons are types of hadrons um, and another type of hadron um, is known as the uh, the pion. Uh, there are a few others but like I said we'll look at um, those uh, hadrons in a later video. The reason why they're only found in hadrons is due to a, um, uh, a, a principle, I suppose, uh, known as quark confinement. Now, this is a really interesting idea, um, and I'll just explain that very quickly here. Uh, if you were to move quarks apart, what you would normally expect, well, if you sort of take any two pieces of matter and move it apart, what you would expect is that, um, that eventually they'd split apart. Um, with quarks though, if you move them apart, it means that they're going to, there's going to be more energy stored. So moving them apart, they're still going to be bound together in a way, and so more energy will be stored there. Uh, continuing to do any further work on that, so continuing to store more or trying to store more and more energy, instead of um, um, separating them, uh, it doesn't actually cause the separation of the quarks. What it does instead is something that's a, a little bit strange. Um, so instead, more quarks are created. Now, if you think, well, hang on, how is matter being created out of nothing? Keep in mind here, it's not nothing. We've got energy stored uh, between the, the quarks as they're being pulled apart. Um, and so more quarks are produced. Um, leaving the original quarks as they were, but uh, with the production of more quarks uh, means that we're now going to have uh, other particles being produced. Sorry, that's unchanged. Um, so a new hadron will be produced there. So that basically means um, a three new quarks are going to be uh, produced, we'll look at why it's three, um, and would end up producing a new hadron in that process. 
So energy is being converted to mass in that particular process. So if we uh, look at what the quarks are, similar sort of table to what we did with the leptons, a uh, little bit more uh, straightforward though. The, um, the quarks are kind of, in a way, they're sort of paired together. So uh, the first quark that we need to look at is known as the up quark or well, the flavor of this quark is the up quark. So flavor is the term that identifies which quark you're looking at. Um, so it's a bit of a, a funny term to use there. Um, the, the quark that's paired with the up quark, not surprisingly, is known as the down quark. So the up quark uses the letter U, the down quark uses the letter D. The next type of quark that we need to look at is known as the charm quark and the one that pairs up with the charm quark is the uh, strange quark. So these names are a bit uh, obscure, a bit strange, a bit unusual, uh, but in the end they're just labels that we use to identify um, the particular, the, the flavor of the quark that we're dealing with. And the last two there are the top and the bottom quark. Now the only thing that we really need to identify about quarks is the charge that's on them. If you think about it um, with the protons and neutrons being made of quarks and a proton having a charge of plus one, it must mean then that the quarks have got sort of incremental or, or fractional charges and they in fact do. So the charge on the up, charm and top quarks is uh, plus two thirds of the elemental charge being the charge on an electron. Um, usually we should technically write it with the E there um, but you'll see that um, quite often it gets dropped because it's always referring to the elemental charge. Uh, now the charge on the, um, the down, strange and bottom quarks is negative one third. Now each quark has a corresponding antiquark. The, the names for these um, will vary depending on which source you look at. Um, so the um, antiquark for uh, the up quark, it's either known as the anti-up quark or it might be known, it might be referred to as the up antiquark, either way, or in some cases just the anti-up. Now, the same way that we saw with um, the leptons, the symbol that we use for the anti-up quark or the up antiquark, whichever way you want to use it, uh, is a U with a bar across it. Uh, the down quark is a D with a bar across it. Uh, the charm quark, you know, the charm antiquark would be a, a C with a bar across, strange, an S with a bar across, and so on and so forth. The top T with a bar across, and the um, bottom would be a B with a bar across. Now, each quark having its corresponding antiquark, um, it's, again, these, this idea of an antiquark, it means that it has the same properties as the corresponding quark. The only thing that's different though is the uh, the sign on the charge. So for a um, the uh, anti-up, anti-charm and anti-top quarks, they have a charge of negative two-thirds. And the down, anti-down, anti-strange and anti-bottom quark have a charge of plus one-third. There are two more things then to discuss about quarks. The first, uh, similar to leptons, as we move to the right through that table, uh, we have increasing mass. So the largest quarks are the top and bottom quarks uh, in terms of the, the mass and the smallest are the up and down. The other thing I'm going to add here won't really make much sense now but it will later. Uh, and that's a, another number that we assign here. It's called the baryon number. Uh, now for quarks, um, the baryon number for the quarks is plus one third. And for uh, the antiquarks is uh, minus one third. As I said, that won't really make much sense now and the, the term baryon, you sort of might be thinking, well, what's that? Uh, we'll find out what that is in the next video. And we'll also then look at how it is that the quarks are combined to form different particles. Uh, and that's where the term baryon will become meaningful. Uh, just one last point to make too that I forgot to mention. Uh, similar to with the, uh, the leptons, We've, uh, with the quarks, we've got both the quarks and the antiquarks. Uh, if we go again back up to the, um, the representation of the standard model, uh, you'll notice that um, we only have, again, the quarks that are stated here. So each of those quarks, being the, uh, the particle, have a corresponding antiparticle as well. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the, uh, the, the fermions. Uh, they have the quarks are 
paired up with antiquarks and the leptons paired up with anti-leptons.